Hello going medieval fans and fellow gamers, my name is Peter and in this guide I will show you how to build not one, but two versions of a greenhouse, a normal one with clay on the ground level and an unnatural one underground. Yes, that is actually possible. The plants will grow without sunlight, at least in the current version of the game. Also, I will show you how you can keep trees growing in winter as well by using a similar concept just supersized to fit actual trees. To showcase all of this, I have started a brand new village in the peaceful mode with three villagers on the normal difficulty and a valley map. I will use this opportunity to show you how a great hall is made and what bonuses it provides alongside both kinds of temples for the religions these villagers follow. In setting up this game and settlers, building the village, its rooms and these greenhouses, I have used many of the tips and tricks which I have shown you in the previous videos. If you have missed any, check the playlist link up here and below. Now let's take this one step at a time. Once I got research going in this village, I unlocked agriculture as soon as possible to start planting crops during the first day of spring. To be able to showcase the greenhouse effect to you in the best possible way, I planted all the types of plants and even the trees. Currently, you can plant only one species of tree. But you should know there are multiple ones, even those which grow naturally in the winter. Above my settlement, I planted two tiles of each plant, starting with cabbage and moving down the list. That means cabbage, flax, carrots, beet, barley, herbs, redcurrant shrub and tall grass. What you should know by now is that all of these plants have different minimum temperatures for sowing, different grow time and different maximum number of harvests before they have to be replanted. Over here on the side I have also planted birch trees. These are also impacted by the temperature and have their own growth cycle and temperature requirements. I will later add another line of these to showcase a greenhouse for trees. Please don't judge me on the main building for the villagers, it's quite austere, ugly and that is by design as the main point of this video are the greenhouses. I will however use it to show you how to build the temples and great hall and explain what effects those special rooms have on your villagers. There is a surprising number of mood modifiers connected to these two rooms, both positive and negative ones. To build an underground greenhouse, I started with digging down two levels and then went down even further to the third underground level. Do keep in mind that plants require natural dirt, soil to grow in, so you can only build, or should I say dig, an underground greenhouse on a spot which is made up of only dirt tiles. These are the ones which are made up of 400 HP and only 2 clay resources. To build a large underground room with open space, I dig in a 6x10 configuration and set up support wooden beams to hold up the upper layers, which is something I have explained in great detail in my guide on stability mechanics. Link up here and below. I did have to pause the digging of the underground greenhouse for one season until I had dug a food basement to keep the food for my villagers fresh. This took the whole of spring, but that is not a problem as you can still sow new fields with plants during the summer season. In case you need tips on how to keep the food fresh in an underground basement, I have you covered with a video linked up here and below in the description. And so, after a lot more digging and construction of wooden beam supports, by the fifth day of summer I had a 6x10 underground room 3 levels deep with a natural dirt floor. In this room I then added an identical setup of plants which I have above ground, meaning two tiles of each type. My villagers immediately started to sow these plants. When I click on a carrot, there is already a problem. It says here growth halted because of low temperature. To even be able to keep track of the temperature inside the room, I had to add an object in it. As I knew I would need to increase the temperature anyway, I built a brazier in the corner of the room. Now when I click on it and the spare text room, I get to see that the current temperature is just 6 degrees Celsius. That is 43 degrees for those of you who use the Fahrenheit scale. Right away, one lone brazier has turned the situation around and now plants will keep on growing, despite the total lack of fresh air and more importantly sunlight. Now is this deliberately by the developers or an oversight they might patch out of the game in a future update? I do not know, but I can confirm 100% that it works right now, so the underground greenhouse is now done. Your food and raw resource fields are protected like this from a lot, firstly the cold weather, then from the snow, lightning and fires. Fire is still an upcoming feature of the game. To increase the temperature of the room further, all you need to do is add more braziers. Depending on the size of the room, you might need 2, 3 or even 4 of them to make it a balmy 25 degrees Celsius all year round. That is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The trees have grown to full maturity by this time and can be harvested, meaning that a birch tree takes about 18 days to grow to the harvesting size during spring and summer on this difficulty. Now I add another line of seedlings as they will be enclosed in a greenhouse of their own so we can follow the effect of winter on tree growth and see what use can a tree greenhouse be. But before that, let's see about that second type of greenhouse for the plants, an above ground one. The main thing to worry about is the temperature. And as we saw from the underground one, plants have to be enclosed to control the temperature with braziers. While natural dirt pillars have the highest insulation at about 0.95, clay walls are a close second with 0.93. Since I have explained the insulation and temperature mechanics extensively in that video I mentioned about basements, I will not go into these details again in this video. And if you have been enjoying this one, please don't mind me asking you to help me out by hitting the thumbs up button, commenting about what other subjects you want me to cover, or post your own advice for other players and subscribe to see more videos like this one. So. Clay is the only material which can prevent heat loss in the winter and so my greenhouse walls are going to be made out of it. I will add a small hallway to the greenhouse and a double set of doors in order to gain the same effect which I get when building underground food basements and that is to prevent heat exchange with other rooms, in this case the environment. Inside this greenhouse I again add the same configuration and number of plant tiles so we can compare the results once winter comes. As for the roof of the greenhouse, insulation is once again the stat we are looking for. As it turns out, the most commonly available materials, sticks and hay, are also the best insulators, at 0.82. So a weaker roof will keep most of the heat in and it's made of the most abundant material. My villagers will take some time to plant all the seeds and complete the construction of the greenhouse. Now let's do something about those trees we want to protect in winter. Again, clay walls are the best insulators and we want to leave some space in the building for braziers. Because this is a tree greenhouse, it's not enough to have a single wall. It has to be three walls high. I will make a narrow entrance hallway just like with the plant greenhouse. The problem here is that villagers can only build on their own level and one level above. So getting them to build three levels up requires some extra supporting structures. First up are stairs, which have to be one tile away from the building in order for there to be room for a single floor tile. This tile has to go all the way around the building so villagers can stand on it and reach to build the third level of clay walls. The roof represents another level entirely, so another level of supports is also needed. More floor tiles, another set of stairs and another level of floor tiles, thankfully only on one side is enough. And that completes the outside of the tree greenhouse. It only needs a brazier inside to bring the heat up. Now about that great hall specialized room. The first thing you need to know about it is that it requires a minimum of 50 tiles in space. This is quite a lot and almost at the limit of 60 tiles, the maximum you can build a room with support pillars being 6 and 10 tiles apart. I have already talked about the other specialized rooms like the library, kitchen and workshop in my previous video on village design part 1 which you can watch by following the link up here and below. The next item on the list for a great hall is a table, medium or large as the small one isn't big enough. After that, add 6 chairs minimum, more is fine. As you can see in the tooltip, wall decoration is also necessary. These you have to unlock in the tech tree. This room requires 8 decorations and 4 torches minimum. You can use deer heads, shields or banners to fill these requirements. Iron torches won't get you anything as opposed to wooden ones except different aesthetics. Once your villagers start eating in the great hall, you will notice the bonus positive mood modifier on their mood card. You can get plus 4 for eating in the great hall and that is on top of the plus 4 for eating at a table. Do note that starving villagers won't wait to get to a table and will eat at the spot where they pick up food. Next room type I want to showcase to you are the temples. You have to make separate temples for each religion. The requirements are not complicated. A single shrine and two wall decorations of the matching religion. But what is very interesting here is the fact that villagers who follow one religion actually take offense every time they move through a temple of the other religion. They get a real negative mood modifier for this. So what you have to do when designing these temples is to find a way to build them in a configuration in which villagers won't have a reason to go into these rooms except to pray, so no passing through to the next room. This is actually just the start of the religion mechanics as the developers have a whole section for this on their roadmap. 
Keep this in mind as you play and the new content is added in the updates which will deepen this mechanic. It is time now to jump to the end of autumn and check our plants and trees in and outside of the greenhouses. What you can notice is that some of the plant tiles are empty. This is because after the last harvest they cannot be sown again as this is not possible this late in autumn. But more importantly when you compare the same plant species out and inside a greenhouse you can see that plants outside have stopped growing due to low temperature while the ones inside which are being warmed by braziers have continued to grow. It's the same down in the underground one. Plants are ripe and in the last stages of growth despite the late season and outside freezing temperatures. To prepare for winter I can add a fourth brazier down here. It is the same with trees. The ones left out in the open have stopped growing once temperature has dropped while the ones inside have continued to grow and are mature enough to be cut down for wood. Another clear success of the greenhouse. The only thing the greenhouses cannot do is force villagers to sow new plant tiles this late in the year. Even when I tried going back a few days in the past and adding new plant tiles for sowing, villagers ignore them. This means that the one game mechanic you can't cheat is time. If you want to have one last big harvest, you have to add new plant tiles just before the day after which sowing is no longer possible. That being late summer for most plants and early autumn for carrots and beets. I hope you got a lot of useful information out of this video and that you have enjoyed it. If you want to offer up suggestions for new topics, feel free to do so in the comments. I want to thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.